Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here. So we're going to be talking about the new Titan changes and everything. But first, um, as you can see, I have Steam Charts open here. Um, I just have to say, I told you so. I told y'all this would happen. Back in my review of the final shape and the raid, I told y'all this exact situation would happen. I told y'all, I, I predicted it. Everybody wanted to disagree with me in the comments that, you know, Final Shape was like, yeah, it's like the best expansion and everything, and I just don't see it. I don't see it. Um, and, and look where we are. Look, look at our, look at our 30 days. Look at our 30 days. This is over the course of the week, you know, course of the month, uh, you know, three months. We've been declining. Just to express the gap. So June is when Final Shape released, right? We gained, you know, 50k people, right? We lost more than we gained the month after. Loss. Loss. To put it in perspective, from this of average player count of in June, 123, we have lost almost 80% of average players. Uh, in terms of, like, average player counts, we've lost 80%. 80 I, I calculated it came out to like 77%. Um, and by the way, I basically put this in as 123. So if you, you know, whip out your calculator, you know, type in 123 minus, and I actually put 28. But uh, y'all can put 27 or something like that. Um, I put 28 because of the 24-hour peak, so I put 28. That'll give you, I forget what number it gives you. It's like 90-something, 90 91 or something like that. And then you subtract 123, you know, well, no, you divide 91 by 123 and you will get how much we, how many, how, how much percentage wife we've, we've actually lost. So yeah, that puts that in perspective. I just wanted to quickly say, you know, I was right. Um, now time changes. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts. I have read this. In my opinion, this does fuck all. For Titan, it did not. It basically did nothing to the worst subclass in all of Destiny Two, Arc Titan. They did fucking nothing with it. Also, my PC is being weird about loading things, so don't worry about images. I'm not gonna cover the reward changes because I don't really care. Um, I'm just gonna be perfectly honest. When you've gotten almost everything in the game, there really is no point to really care about loot. So I don't really care. Power band power cap is increasing. Well. Power bands of power floor will be 1900, soft cap will be 1950, hard pinnacle cap will be 2010. Whatever. <laughs> now for Titans. I do think there are some good changes here. But uh Unbreakable Will. I don't I don't really get what the what the fuck? I don't know why I'm running into errors with this, but you know, long story short. They are kind of addressing how, you know, you know, Titans wield defensive staples like Barricade and Stasis Crystals. I'm just going to be honest. Titan Barricades, when Thruster came out, Titan Barricades became officially the worst. This Thruster is just, it's, it's just leagues better. It gives you a little bit of extra movement, but also with powerful attraction specifically, getting all those ores, being able to go from low to 100 super quickly if you build right, you know, just so much stuff. Barricade, especially towering barricade is trash. You should never you you should never under any circumstances use towering barricade. You should always, always use rallying barricade. Because you get a range of reload buff along with the shorter cooldown time. Now, um here to support Titan's new aggro lifestyle. Um we've made some adjustment to barricades at Unbreakable. Uh, towering barricades and rallying barricades, all subclasses, reduce non-boss combatant damage dealt to barricade by 50%. This will help for GMs, which is great. Increased splash damage reduction from combatants for players behind the barricade from 20% to 60%. This is great. Because also another issue with barricades is if an enemy threw like a splash damage thing, you kind of would have to, you'd be forced to move away from it. Barricades now grant moderate damage resistance versus combatants during cast animation, which is also a really helpful change. Um... But also something to note that um, Titan Barricades are now going to taunt. The taunt is, however, it's only going to happen when um, somebody when somebody is standing behind the barricade. Which is great. It kind of incentivizes that hunker down kind of play style. Um, 
But uh, based on what they say, well, enemies will typically prioritize bringing down the barricade above all else. There are combat situations where commands may have higher priorities than the barricade, such as a Wex Wyvern with a directive to march towards a conflux, or a Cabal Legionnaire desperately trying to bring down a Guardian in their super. Okay. Enemies who are on a mission may prioritize that mission over the barricade. Okay. Okay, so basically what they're saying is you can't just distract enemies from objectives, basically. Um, and especially the beef your enemies well. Which is which is which is fine, which is fine. Unbreakable, which I personally hate, damage, but for you, you guys that like unbreakable, I uh, I just don't want it to use my grenade. Damage blocked by unbreakable now grants grenade energy. Okay, that that's pretty good. Pretty good change. Mac increased max duration. The shield can be held. Pretty solid. Forward movement speed now slows down brief briefly when the shield is hot. I I'm not sure how I feel about this change. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It reduced Unbreakable's throw attack damage versus players by 20%. I feel like both of these are more of a PvP nerf, but the speed really shouldn't be reduced in PvE. Increased damage bleed through players by 15%. So if you, I guess if you catch multiple players with it, um, I guess it's... What? I don't kind of... I kind of want to... I'm assuming this means that if you catch multiple people with it, that they're going to take damage as well, more damage. Or it's just going to deal more tick damage? I don't know. I don't quite understand that. Fully charged unbreakable attacks will now one-shot barricades in PvP, except when the barricade is under the effects of Heart of Inmost Light. Interesting. That gives it some viability. Oh, okay. okay. This gives it some PvP, you know, tie-in v tie-in type situations. While we're here on Unbreakable and Titans, we, we should mention over damage over shield. This is a staple of the Sentinel kit, and we think it could be used a little help in PvE to better compete with other damage mitigation options. Increased void over shield PvE damage resistance from 50 to 70. And it's increased maximum effective HP to 90 from 90 to 150. Okay. My thoughts on this. Um, I haven't messed around with, with Frost Armor enough. I think the main issue is Woven Mail has a lot of things to feed into it, but Overshield don't really have that much to feed into it. Um, the only thing is like extra melee and grenade regen, I, be I believe. I believe it's only melee, I don't, I don't remember quite, but I feel like that's a little... Mm -hmm. But honestly, this is going to help if you want to use um, Buried Blood... This is going to help melt massively if you use Buried Bloodline because of... Um, you get... Devour by either rapidly defeating enemy combats or having an overshield, if I remember correctly. And then you, when you have Devour, you get um, you weaken targets. So I think this will help help pretty well with that. This is also going to ironically help second chance indirectly because they get a second shield throw. This doesn't help. By the way, these changes don't really help prismatic much. The unbreakable, sure, but the void overshield it only really helps shield. It also helps shield throw massively too, actually. But is that really going to impact that? No. Next up, Prismatic Titans. Okay. Uh, will inherit all applicable changes to Barricade and Breakable and Sentinel Shield. We're also buffing several other Titan abilities featured in Prismatic Titan. These changes are global, meaning that they can be applied to both, both, you know, the base subclass and Prismatic. Consecration, Scorch, and Slam Waves. Now Shattered Stasis Crystals. This doesn't really change anything. I'm pretty sure this was a bug. Diamond Lance. Thrown or slam stasis. Diamond Lances will now shatter stasis crystals. Slamming a Diamond Lance will grant you and nearby allies two stacks of frost armor. This is... Okay, change the weapon tray, what, yada yada yada. This, in my opinion, is actually pretty useful. Depending. So, currently, Titans don't have a grenade that can, that can reliably kill on higher difficulties. Like, pulse grenade, enemies move out of it. And the problem with this is this means we can't get volatile without we can't get volatile without grenade kills. Um so I am curious if you throw a glacier grenade at a distance, you have a diamond lance, you throw it at that wall, bam. I wonder if that'll count as a grenade kill. I am kinda curious how that's going to work. So I do think that that could be pretty cool. That that could for sure be pretty cool. Um, and also, this is, helps taste the time. Also, well, Diamond Lance was already really good. Knockout. Melee kills now cancel health and shield stun. In addition to healing, allow you to immediately start regenerating. Now, this is to revert a previous nerd that hit too much of a negative impact on PvE. 
Oh, I'm assuming this means like if you get hit the second you uh, melee, it'll it'll stop that hit. That this is gonna be more so. We're gonna have to fail it out. Knockout's pretty good though. Trevor Strike now attaches a stasis explosive to the target. This detonation slows players and freezes combatants. Now refunds 80% energy melee energy on whiff. Finally, this is being treated like a shoulder charge because that's basically what it is. Increased energy recharge rate by 12.5%. Immediately after landing a Shiver Strike attack, the attacker's melee ability is now suppressed for 0.5 seconds. Okay, so you can't Shiver Strike and immediately melee. So, okay. That's pretty Ooh! 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 Man, Stasis Titan is looking pretty solid now. I would argue that Arc is slightly worse, but Stasis Titan has needed some help. But Stasis Titan's biggest issue was its super, not much else. Uh, but the melee, the melee, great change is not gonna make anybody you not use consecration and um, the strand Titan melee frenzy blade. No, no, I'm sorry, but frenzy blade has too many charges on prismatic. Uh, not specifically a prismatic Titan only option. We know they felt the nerf of the most of what the most when fast enough commands cooldown was moved to 11 seconds. We grieved for 11 seconds felt too long. Um, I go domineering cooldown reduced from 11 seconds to four seconds. Okay, I'm gonna double check here for y'all. Um, because I don't remember. I don't remember what those things do. I don't even know if I use it. It's command and domineering. Interest. I don't use either. <laughs> I don't use either. <laughs> um. So that, if that tells y'all anything. So command is freezing or suppressing a target reloads your equipped weapons and increased stability aim assist. Defending a frozen target or suppressed target creates a stasis shard or void reach. Passing a command is only good if you're using stasis, basically, which um, I wasn't using, so that makes sense. Are they sure they mean domineering because there's dominance? But I don't see domineering unless I don't have it. But I have all of them. I'm going to assume that they mean dominance. I don't know what they mean by domineering. Oh, echo of oh, that's on void. That's on void. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Don't don't worry. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, I also don't use it. But I believe that's the void one, right? Yeah. After suppressing a target, you gain greatly increased mobility for a short duration, and your equipped weapon is reloaded from reserves. Yeah, but that's just kind of a nothing. I don't know why the cooldown was that long, anyways, but. This is, could be interesting. I just personally prefer. Because um, Void Breaches are kind of useless without um, Bastion. Because they... they So, the all of the kind of like little special things like that do something. Like, Tangles are are different, but like Station Shards, they give you... Um, with a Fragment, they give you melee energy, and but they can also... They also give you Frost Armor. Uh, void Breaches only give you class ability regen. Fire Spites can give you a little bit of regen, like health regen, but they focus on grenades, and Iano Traces do everything. So, I don't know, I feel like Void, to me personally, Void Breaches are kind of just useless without Bastion, but we'll see what the new barricade changes. Now, Titan Unpowered Melee, increased damage against players for 5%, and increased damage against PvE combats by 20%, increased stun multiplier. This is absolutely fantastic. This actually makes this actually makes knockout even better which is absolutely fantastic because sometimes getting trying to get knockout and like bailing a regular red bar enemy and just it not killing it is kind of absurd so yeah i, I like these changes let's go get into arc for warlock you're a storm you increase your damage resistance a little bit fix a couple issues nova warp increased pve damage by 20 percent i've seen some people use it um and you know so fix some kit. Well, this is uh, and increase damage resistance, and now any warp warp detonation applies a volatile regardless on charge duration. Pretty solid, honestly. Pretty good change for like ad clearing and everything. Golden gun, increase the damage against base elite and mini boss damages, not boss. So keep that in mind. So the boss damage of golden gun's not getting increased. So it's kind of incentivizing you to use it against regular enemies as well, like mini boss enemies instead of just saving it for bosses. Spectral Blades, uh, increase PvE damage by 20%. I don't think this is going to change it, or that much. I don't see anyone using Spectral Blades. 
Titans, Glacial Quake. How long does Storm King be used when Glacial Quake is active? This is pretty solid. This is going to be a change that we're really going to have to see. By the Arsenal, throw an Axe Projectiles now more consistently track towards targets closer to the Radical. This is fantastic. I know I've seen a ton of clips, and me and myself have axe, Axes just go way off target. It's like, what the actual fuck? Inque increase the Relic's weapon damage versus combatants by 23%. So, you, so you're not as incentivized to just leave the Axes alone. Thundercrass increased base detonation, dead, base detonation damage by 33%. So not the aftershock damage, the initial hit. I don't think it's going to move the needle. Thundercrash on Prismatic is one of the weakest things. They really need to help out. They need to change Kiros up. They need to change Kiros of the Falling Star. This also makes me wonder if a change is going to be hitting Kiros of the Falling Star. I don't remember how big of a damage increase Kiros gave it. But I they need to change how Kiros interacts with Thundercrash so that... Using Thundercrash isn't as required with Kiros. Also, I do know that um, if you're using Prismatic and Thundercrash, you need to use Kiros instead of Star Eaters. Star Eaters is worse than Kiros. So keep that in mind. Fists of Havoc. Increase damage resist by a little bit. Change the light attack works under the hood to improve consistency on hitting targets, which is great. Suddenly increase the light attack, lunge range, and ability to target enemies vertically. Those are that that is such a massive change because the problem is after doing the heavy slam, trying to launch forward towards another enemy, it takes too long. Now for Act Two of Revenant, we're investigating increasing roaming super uptime so that they're more so they're more often available when you need them. Stay tuned for that. That's interesting. Now again, we're mostly gonna be talking about Titans here, but again, Bunch of changes, Lightning Surge, you have Damage Resist, versus Titan Barricades during the launch. I don't know what this means exactly. So if you, if you launch it while you're in a barricade, you don't take as much damage. Oh, Lightning Surge didn't make you Amplified? What? Okay, well, now it makes you Amplified. Um, hail, fire, spike, prismatic, grenade, adds projectile tracking, aim assist to consistently in hitting consistency in hitting targets. Okay. Threat inspector, increased detonation damage. Right. Swarm, whatever. Combination blow, rescaled healing from a flat 80 HP per kill to 180, 60, 40 for per kill based on stack count. No longer clears health and shield stun on kill. Remove the 1.5 second interval. Cooldown on healing. Ooh. Oh, damage and survivability. Interesting. So they're nerfing the healing a little bit. I'm perfectly okay with this. Is your nerf haste of spades? This is interesting. This looks so... What? Small. What the? What the small? What? But but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it. That's kind of it though. So yeah, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I am for sure actually going to upload this time. Um, and again, if you're seeing this, I'm I don't know yet if I'm going to tune into Revenant into the Revenant next episode. It it to me personally, it heavily heavily depends on. The exotic armor changes. Because I definitely feel like all these changes. I think it's going to move Void. I think it's going to move Void a little bit though. Void is already good though. People are sleeping on Void too much. And. Arc Titan is still really really bad. This almost did nothing for it. Except make Knockout even more required. Um, I see Fist of Havoc. Maybe coming up slightly in usage. And that's very very slightly in usage. And. Thunder Crash is just it were like we need to see exotic armor changes. If there are any, uh, Stasis Tine is definitely going to be like it's honestly might be pretty fun to use honestly. So that's exciting. That's pretty exciting. Um, we'll see if this can manage to recover some of the numbers and downturn that Destiny Two has had. Um, also, things don't worry. We will be continuing Dark Souls Three. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow as I will be uploading. Tomorrow, I will be uploading the um, next episode for that. Osiris the Consumed King and starting the DLC, the Ashes of Ariendo DLC. Uh, we basically have three more episodes max, uh, that being 
Bash is very end though. Ring City DLC. I don't know if I can make that one video. Um, so that, that's why I'm saying that. Um, I think I can get to have Life Spear of the Church, but then uh, second episode, probably the episode after that being Dark Kingdom of Deer and Slave Night Gale, probably. Then the last video being Nameless King and Soul of Cinder. Um, and stay tuned for those, those last two episodes are going to have lore to them. Are going to have lore at the end. Um, also, Spark and Zero. Um, let me know what you plan on making it in the comments below. Um, I still don't know if I'm going to be streaming when it releases or not. I kind of have to wait till it gets closer for me to get my schedule. If y'all want to see some Sparking Zero gameplay streamed, let me know. Uh, so videos on the story themselves will be coming. And also also on the way is Lethal Company. My first horror game. Code Horror Game. I'm saying quote unquote. But you'll see. It's not no. Thanks for tuning in. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.